if I turn on our audio. There we go. All righty. Hi, everybody. So today, this is our normal killer video uh, coordination meeting where we talk all things killer video, but we want to focus today on should we mount a repo? And Jeff, what is so funny? There's something very funny. I've never seen Jeff laugh so much, so I want to know what it is, actually. We're just watching YouTube videos. Oh, great. So here, we're actually going to talk about the mono repo, but really, we're going to watch YouTube videos is what we're going to do. <laughs> no, focus, focus. Sorry. This is the downfall of businesses since uh, since social media. Nice job, Jeff. Nice. Okay, so I see Alex is back. Great. Um, yeah, so anyway, so we want to focus today. We're, 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 the question came up so many weeks ago, right? Um, whether or not uh, to go to a mono repo style repo uh, uh, for killer video because as Alex has definitely pointed out um, because of the microservice style architecture of killer video and the way it was originally created and why we have like if you if you want to do any development on the system you have to download like eight different repos and keep them all together and, and there's all sorts of fun things you have to do with get subtree poles which are just a big pain um, and what's crazy about it is is since uh, Alex first brought up the discussion about mono repos. I was doing some reading and some research, and come to find out that what we're talking about is nothing in the mono repo world. That there are companies out there that have like crazy, crazy amounts of repos that they actually bring together. So I feel like what we're doing in a way is kind of like probably easy uh, from the mono repo discussion. So here's here's the whole topic: should we mono repo or not? Um, so. Alex, since you kind of brought this up, and I know that you have uh, biased opinions, why don't you give us your biased opinion? <laughs> well, <laughs> guilty, your majesty. <laughs> yeah, so guys, uh, before uh, giving you my opinion, I want to highlight uh, why I'm talking about it in general, and why I consider myself experienced enough in this field to talk about that. So, uh, I work with um, service-oriented architecture and microservices for the last three projects besides of Killer Video. So, that's like, I don't know, more than five or six years of experience. And I can say what in all my uh, previous experiences, um, it never was monolithic. And... Um, Every time, monorepo would be better for us, considering all benefits and downsides. In the result, uh, on my former project, I've organized a partial transition uh, to monorepo, uh, and it really, really helped us a lot. That was a very interesting uh, example I would uh, explain in a few minutes uh, what I can say in our situation um, from my point of view if my, with my experience in distributed applications I can say monorepo will work much better that doesn't mean what we have to switch for any purposes we could decide to stay in uh, multi-repo and it will be fine for us, as uh, we have to admit, development of killer video doesn't go so active. But for active big commands with uh, multiple of deployments and commits daily, it definitely gives huge benefit. Uh, yeah, that's my position. One thing I have to add here. Uh, I never was asked for it, but uh, I have to add it because that's not obvious for those who has no experience with monorepos. Monorepos doesn't mean what you always have one single repo for everything. That's not perfectly correct. Um, as I did on my uh, former job, I've used um, mirroring of the repos when the main monorepo was partially mirrored into the um, special dedicated repository. I can't uh, share a code as it's, it's uh, with non-disclosure agreement, uh, but I have very good example in open source world. Uh, there is 
I will be able maybe to share my screen to explain it a bit better. Yeah, go for it. Just a second. Be careful what you share, Alex. Be careful. Hope you, yeah, <laughs> that should be fine. The whole world sees everything. So, github.com Symphony. Who of you knows Symphony? I don't do PHP. <laughs> wait, wait, there's something that okay. Cedric doesn't do? Oh, man. I don't know yeah, that. yeah, that's a big wow. surprise, you see. Yeah, seriously. So, uh, Symphony yeah, is, uh, from my point of view, the best uh, PHP framework. I even did some of my contributions there. Doesn't matter. So, and they are using Monorepo. And they are very, very, very separated into components and different components or bundles should be absolutely standalone and reusable into every, uh, another project you would like to use. So, I don't know, let's say, let's say, HTTP kernel like a uh, possible base for any HTTP driven application that's a component which lives and developed as a part of a symphony monorepo but for our uh, purposes for the purposes of those who use a symphony uh, they have to be able to clone it and work uh, with it um, not working with a whole monorepo it makes no sense if you want to work with one single component. So in this case, all of these components are extracted to a separated uh, to a separate repositories. <laughs> yep. So hey, Alex, a quick question for you. I see. Yep. I'm glad you showed what you just showed, right? Because it's good to see that they're actually in their individual repositories. But right here. How do I know something as a repository compared to just another directory? Um, like, if you wouldn't have told sorry. me that those were individual, like, and maybe I'm misunderstanding, but like, mm -hmm. use kernel, right, is the example. Uh, did I see it there somewhere? Or HTTP? Which one was it? I, I thought you were suggesting that when you looked at the individual modules here, that these were repos within the model repo. Did I get that right, or am I mm -hmm. totally misunderstanding? Yeah. yeah. So how would I know when I'm here, how would I know that these are repos that have essentially been merged into a mono repo? They just look like directories to me or folders. I, man, I'm sorry. I can't say I understand the question. I, am I just asking um, a weird question, guys, or does anyone get what I'm trying to say? No, I understand what you're trying to say. It's, it's kind of the, the, I'm trying to think how to rephrase this. So, your mono repo isn't just a collection of folders for each of the individual projects themselves, right? Right. It's mm -hmm. it's a lot more complex than that. I think your question was, how does that actually work? No, I'm 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 saying looking at this interface here, right? Um, is okay. Let me let me step back for a second. So, Alex, what you're showing mm -hmm. us, I see Symphony component is component its own repo within Symphony. Like you showed us a set of, maybe I'm just getting confused at what I'm seeing. Uh, so this repo uh, is the main repo and the mono repo for everything what relates to Symphony. Right. So you have here bridges, bundles, components, and so on. Okay. Now, okay, so right here mm -hmm. to this point. In my, if, let's say I just had a regular Git project, right? And within mm -hmm. that Git project, I could very easily just have multiple directories that house files and such. So at what point from the, as I understand the mono repo and like when I did reading, right, it is kind of like the opposite of what we do, where we have multiple repos right now. And if I want to pull those down, I have to pull, like to do development, I have to, I have to get clone each individual repo, do work on them, so on and so forth. Where in the mono repo yeah. standpoint, right, I can just, I can go to a single repo and I get the whole set of what I want to work on. So with that, if I were to go into any one of these projects, like Killer Video Java or whatever, I'm going to have directories that are underneath there that are represented in my Git, in my, in my Git repository. When you're showing a symphony, those just look like directories to me. So I'm having a hard time bringing together the monorepo part. How do I know that I'm not just looking at 
a Git repo with directories is compared to a mono repo that has multiple repositories. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Mono repo is very often is just a set of folders. Oh, and that's completely <laughs> fine. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Uh, so uh, uh, that's the point uh, when you want to, uh, you see, if you want to put some uh, minor atomic changes into one single um, application, like let's say into Node.js, uh, when there is no principal difference if you work with monorepo or um, multi-repo. But if you work um, with, if your job is uh, change, is to change multiple things in multiple different uh, projects. So you have to adjust things for Node.js, you have to adjust things for um, generator, for uh, front-end. When uh, using uh, monorepo, that's still one uh, Git uh, branch. And all your job uh, regarding different um, applications are in still the same branch. If you work with multiple repositories, when you have to check out a few different applications, men make few different clones, and your changes between them are often inconsistent. So if we were to go the monorepo route, is it simply, and maybe I was just overthinking what you were showing, um, is it simply someone goes through the process of taking all the individual repos that are responsible for the overarching killer video ecosystem and essentially pulling those down and putting them into a single directory structure and then checking that one thing in as here is killer video and so what you've essentially done is like coalesced all of the individual repos into a single repo with they're just the different projects are in directories is that it mostly that's it uh, okay. If you have uh, one single repository and you make um, some changes uh, into your branch and make a pull request, when you have the place where you see centralize it in one single place, all your changes. And that's good because okay. that's easier to run tests against that, for example. Yeah. If you have few different applications, few different branches, and few different pull requests, there is no single point um, to control it. And um, in this case, guys, a single point is good. I know we at uh, DataStacks and we're working with Cassandra, we're usually trying to remove single point of failure. In this case, I'm talking about single point of control and we need yeah. to, to have it. Yeah, one thing um, I, I think, I guess a plus for the mono repo, right, is like today when doing development, let's take killer video Docker common or killer video data or something like that, right? Um, uh, in those cases, if we make, well, the nice thing today is if you make a change to one of those, uh, if you're working in killer video, Java, C sharp or Node.js or soon to be Python, right? Then you know that you have that centralized piece there, but you still have to go to each individual one, redo your Git subtree poll, right? To, to sync up with the, the latest from those it today, I'm saying today mm -hmm. that you have to do that. It sounds like in the mono mm -hmm. repo case that you would make the one change and everyone would have it because they're all in the single repo. Yep. Okay. Um, a couple of comments on Twitch. So Adrian Hall says, you know, some of the issues uh, would be a mono repo conflates what is valid in a project related specifically to the language or language stack, bridging concerns together that often don't need or ought not to be maintained together from a separation of concerns or division of labor type of perspective. Um, so I think Adrian, correct me if I'm wrong, um, oh yeah, uh, actually I'll just read his second comment because he's following up. Um, which for this project probably would make things easier, but it doesn't make the example easier to understand for someone reviewing it, just offering some counterpoints. Um, with the, um, what do you call it, winky smiley face? Winky smiley face? <laughs> That's what that is. <laughs> um, right, so I guess, I guess it is. It's a question of, um, uh, it would make some things simpler, right? From the development standpoint, without a doubt, I think it would streamline some things. Um, but right, right. The getting to that last point. Um, yep. Winky smiley face. Okay, good. 
um, but ought not to be maintained together from a separation of concerns or division of labor type perspective. Um, so okay. to that point, I, I, th I think that's valid. I, I guess my concern here, or my main concern with the killer video in general is that it's it's a really high cost of entry from a knowledge standpoint. Yeah. And if a mono repo reduces that for our end users, I think it's probably worth a little bit of um, extra difficulty on our end, I guess. So, um, so to that point, is it though? Like, so right now, I, I think there's two different types. There's the end users like you're referring to, right, Eric, where they have to go through it. Like if they're going to start with killer video Java or something like that, they have to pick one. They have to pick a language. And then from there, you could technically do your Docker Compose. Like it'll pull down all the repos, all the things you need from the images right. we have in Docker Hub. From a development perspective, however, it is a lot harder because if any one of us or anybody else out there is going to do development, let's say you're going to do development on the front end. <laughs> how many repos did you have to download and understand how that all works together in order to make that work, right? So I feel like it's more right. of a benefit for us. that was the ridiculous part. Yeah. Yeah, I do feel like there could be a benefit to us. And I think that's kind of, there. there is a reduction in complexity in one way. Is it kind of, did that echo what you were saying, Eric? Yeah, yeah, I suppose. I guess when I'm when I'm thinking end user, I'm thinking anyone who wants to get in the code. And if there's uh, some extra organizational work on our end to keep things, you know, governed correctly, so we're not, you know, um, mixing things up too much, I guess. Um, I guess I'm okay with that concept as long as, you know, the, the end result is the experience is better for for anyone not us who's using it. Yeah. Okay, and then Jeff Jeffrey Jeffrey S. Carpenter or Jeffrey's Carpenter. Oh, which one? Is it Jeffrey's Carpenter or Jeffrey S. Carpenter? Um, who happens to be on the call? So that's there's that. Uh, he's got a couple yeah. questions. Oh, you, well, you do have, it's your name. I'm just going off your, your handle here. But uh, it says, what will changing to Mono Repo do to our build scripts? That is an interesting question. Um, right now, that's a really neat question. I almost wonder, so we've got the all-in-one now, right? It feels to me that if we were to use the Mono Repo, the all-in-one is the right place to start there and not go messing around with the core base stuff we've already got in place, if we were to do that. To, so... If we did that and we housed everything within all in one, I mean, there would definitely need to be changes to the build scripts because right now it's assumed for each of the language variants for Python, C Sharp, Java, and Node.js, each one of them has to have, I mean, they're very similar, um, but they have to have their own little piece of the build script, right? Uh, to do everything from there. And I believe there's even some, if you take a look at the generator and some other things, I want to say that they actually have their own as well. It feels like those would all have to be consolidated, right? And, and it probably put it at the base of the all-in-one or maybe some master script that then iterates through those or something. Um, I feel like there would be changes. Uh, of course, uh, changes like that uh, bring a lot of... Um, requirements changes for um, build processes so there is no doubts okay um, and then Jeff also says I think there's probably not a lot of debate that we'd go mono repo if we we're starting today but what about cases where people have bookmarked specific code that's a really neat point um, now I guess we could always leave the current stuff out there and say moving forward like with all in one I guess it's the same argument, isn't it, Jeff? Um, if we move to all-in-one, which is what we're planning, then that is a totally different repo on its own. Um, and as we move forward, even if we deprecate the old stuff, right, um, we'd leave it there so the stars won't be affected. Uh, but as we move forward with all-in-one, all that I almost separate from the model repo, wouldn't that be the same question? So it's like the you have a bunch of old repos in this killer video org which are marked as deprecated, and we put disclaimers on all of this. Like we're not maintaining these anymore. Here's the forwarding address of where you can find the new code in our single mono repo, and then blog posts or something um, that deep link. Okay, I confess I have blog posts that deep link to source code files. Yeah in places like killer video python repo and so my question is am i i don't want to go rewrite all my blog posts 
Why should I have to do that? Could we just leave those repos in place, though? If Other we people, them? I would think, have the same thing. And we could, but then it would be like, well, I don't know. We're not maintaining that code anymore. And then it's, it's, I don't know. It begins well, to date itself over time, and maybe that's okay. And and in the description of a repo, too, you can write, like, this This is no longer supported. I mean, right. it, it doesn't need to be, like, a... It, it's pretty easy to say that, is, I guess what I'm saying. Um, so I don't know that that actually would add any complexity if we just wanted to leave those out there and yeah I leave the you know out of date no longer under support please go here for you know current or something whatever that needs to look like yeah so that way any any past blog posts that we because I have the same thing right we've we've all got links to the work that we've done um, in those and um, I'm trying to think like some of the stuff on the recommendation engine in, in graph for Java right that's a year and a half old now right uh, so as long as the old repos are still there. They're just marked, deprecated. Then those links all still work. Um, I guess it, I guess it would be the same kind of argument too, separate from modern repo. If we, you know, like moving the Cedrix v v two or whatever, that eventually, with just the evolution of our code, we may be moving away from some of the repos that we have older hard links to in our blog posts or other people have blog posts. But as long as we leave those repos, then those should all still be valid. Unless I'm missing some other point on that. All right, the next one I see. I Also, I know this is a vanity metric, but what about all of our GitHub stars? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know on that one. Like, yeah. <laughs> I guess, is it the same Is it the same exact argument, though? Like, if we move to a new code base or, or something like that, anytime we move away from their current repos, I think all of these questions are valid for all of those. I, I think to some extent, that's kind of the cost of, of innovation is, <laughs> yeah, it is a vanity metric. It's nice, but... So, so Adrian happened to say, uh, responding to Jeff's vanity metric question about the GitHub stars, uh, Adrian said, true, uh, at Jeffrey's Carpenter. Uh, we, I'll stop doing that. We'd get way more focused GitHub activity then. Uh, would they? I, th I wouldn't think they would if we move into a monorepo. If we move into a monorepo, would we want to leave the old repos out there? Seems they would add confusion. Um, so there's a couple things in there. Uh, I don't have a good. Hmm. So, so Adrian, are you saying that if we move to a mono repo, we'd get more focused GitHub activity, but then the counter would be the potential confusion with having all the old repos compared to the mono repo? Is that what you're getting at? Um, I believe uh, better activity means what uh, activity is centralized. So we got not one star for Node.js, one star for. Uh, Java and one star for web, but all of them go to the same repo. So we have three stars in single repo. I believe that was I the see. point. Okay, and yeah, he did respond with yes, and then he followed up with, I think we would want to delete the old repo. So I guess, let's pretend for a second we did that, right? Um, that we went to a mono repo, we, we did all this, we get the increased focus GitHub activity. Uh, but then if we delete the old repos to just point, uh, what do we do then with all those old blog post links? I mean, and, and not only that, for people who may have linked to our own code. Um, I know that I've actually talked to multiple developers in the past, people who have actually used that stuff. We've pointed them there in a ton of content. I would, I would feel iffy about deleting that stuff right off the bat unless we left it around for some time and then deleted it over time or something. Like, do you have a thought on that, um, Adrian, as far as the links? Right, right. Jeff, Je Jeffrey Carpenter saying, then my blog is broken. Exactly. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm curious to know if anyone has a thought on what we would do if we, if we deleted the old repos. Um, is that even really a possibility in the short term? Because I think we'd break a lot of stuff. I want to add one thing that doesn't exactly answer your question. Sorry, David. Yeah, no worries. But I believe uh, I believe it deserves uh, to be mentioned. Um, as soon as I got into Killer Video application, I mean in general as an operational application, my first effort was to get rid of registrator and ktcd. And that's important to understand why. 
every application should solve the um, problem, otherwise it's useless. Uh, purpose of killer video is to be a reference application for Cassandra and Datastax Enterprise. So if anyone wants to learn how he or she works with uh, Cassandra or Datastax Enterprise, he or she needs to have very good, clear and simple examples um, about this uh, work, about how it's going on. It means what the main goal, main purpose of this application is to deliver experience for the developers and to do it smoothless, to do it correct, we have to reduce, we have to emphasize the, the, the things those are important and things those are important here are Cassandra and working with Cassandra and to reduce as much as possible all the things that doesn't directly relate to it or um, doesn't is not essential for this uh, purpose. So uh, UTCD and registrator was an overcomplication. Uh, what was distracting people for the, from the main purpose? That's, that was one of the main reasons for me to get rid of them. Loopback interface, you know what I mean. Uh, UTCD uh, service registry. Yeah, that was the thing to keep it simple, stupid. To keep in focus what's the really important. So, if we would be a real developers of a real killer video application trying really to... Um, take over uh, YouTube or whatever and uh, conquer the market, then I would definitely say with all my um, passion for the development, uh, yes, we must go uh, all in, we must go uh, monorepo because it makes development easier. Because development as for, for us developers is an important thing. As long as we don't develop it so much actively as a usual application as long as we follow the main thing to show the guys how do you work with um, Cassandra and Datastax Enterprise in different environments then it probably makes sense to keep it like it is yeah and, and to follow up with that uh, Cedric or C. Lumvon Sorry, Cedric. I think I always mess up your last name, Cedric Levant. Um, he says, what about a single repo for everything except for the back end services? Um, I would like having different... <laughs> Cedric said you do. He's, he's agreeing that I always mess up his last name. I'm so sorry, Cedric. You can, can you spell your name phonetically so I'll get it right? Um, but yeah, he did follow up then. I would like having different build for different languages. And he, he mentions Travis, which makes a lot of sense, right? Um, so from the automated build standpoint and everything... Um, I, I could see that being a thing. So that's actually kind of another option there that we hadn't really talked about. Now, I should point out, we have literally a minute left. I don't think we're going to figure this out today. It, it sounds like we need a little bit more discussion on it. But just kind of to end cap this um, to Cedric's point that we still could keep our language variants, but then, you know, collapse all of the backend services, right? All that stuff that actually makes it more complex to do development, collapse that into a model repo and then still have the language variants. Um, maybe we do like a hybrid fashion there. Uh, because I feel like some of the complexity we have today and some of the points you've been making, Alex, um, is the fact that as from a development standpoint, you have to know about and maintain all of those other backend repo, the service repos. Um, and collapsing that into a single one might actually greatly simplify it. And it might be a neat way that we can bridge some of the points that Jeff's been making about like deep links and such. Um, with with code and, and that kind of deal, and at the same time kind of simplify the process. So uh, we do have to close out, though, though, because it is 1230. So it sounds like we'll need a, a follow-up on this. Uh, anyone have any final things they want to say before we, we drop off? Uh, yes, one final thing. Uh, in this case, there is uh, following the um, phrase from uh, Cedric, there is no real need to... Um, have different builds for different languages. Usually that's really easy to calculate on a Git level if your exact uh, backend Python 
um, project has been changed and then run again, run build process against this Python backend project. So that's uh, not a big deal to distinct which build project should be executed uh, following the commits into the repo. That's the easiest part, I would say. Okay. All right. Anyone else? I see. Uh... All right. I see a couple tail end comments from from the team. Adrian says, "I like the build for specific languages idea." Uh, per Cedric. And yes, it is time. It is time for us to drop. So we'll end it there for now. Thank you guys. Um, well, I'll set up another follow on discussion, and uh, we can grok on this stuff for a little bit. And hopefully we come to a, a solution next time. All right, guys. See you. Thank you.